So, um, the way I, I, I designed the, the lecture is that I, this is an overview of, of really old work, student work, new work, commercial work, non-commercial work, and um, I like to show you how I or my, my studio, how, how we work. And part of that is um, how, part of it is that it's, it's completely accidental. So part of the, the, the design process I go through is that I set up a system and the accidental nature of, of that system defines what the outcome is. So that's why I have 100 pieces here and in 45 minutes you ain't gonna get through 100 pieces, that's for sure. So maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 at the most. So that leaves always something to desire. So what, what, I, what I like to do is to, to, every time I just pick someone, hopefully someone different, but <laughs> no, not, uh, I don't think that that will work out anyhow. So I will pick one person to give me uh, a number between one and 10, and I will pick another person to give me a letter between A and J, you probably figure that. So then the piece comes up, I say something, and uh, we we'll just roll from there. And hopefully by the end of the 45 minutes, you'll see how I've worked over, I don't know, the, over the years. So if you give me a number. Uh, four. Four? OK. And if you give me a letter. Uh, I. Oh, OK. So great. So let's let's start with that. So that's that's a, a, a totally random piece. Um, <coughs> the um, that's the 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 client is uh, University of Westminster, the architecture department, and they 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 keep asking me to do to do some some work for them, and the the style is pretty much set as in quite modernistic. So the the font is accident grotesque, um, and what I was trying to do with this here, this is just the. Um, uh, one front cover, and I, I designed it as a, as a series of front covers. And if you if you line them all up, you get the the rest of the quote. So and they were given away for they were given away for for free. So half of the that's uh, drawings in there as it says at the top, uh, student drawing, student drawing research. And uh, Gordon Shrickley, he's the the lecturer, and uh, so my my studio we, we designed uh, that publication. It's A4. Uh, and we had two or three covers, and they, the covers itself, they, uh, I wouldn't say they, they create a system, but the next cover then is le, uh, Le Petit More, and uh, it just has a nice uh, quote on, on the cover, and uh, when, it all, when it was all laid out in the exhibition, it looked, I don't know, I think I thought it looked, looked quite nice. So if you give me another number. Five. Five. And a letter? H. Okay, let's see. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> uh, so that's a really, really interesting piece. Um, uh, the, it's, it's, it's an artist publication, and it's called White Noise. And the, um, there were two, two artists thrown together, by, by, by literally by, by chance. And they, they worked in a, um, uh, they had a residency and, and were given uh, two weeks to work in one room, which happened to be an ex-rail station. Um, and they, they, had to, they had to create a, a piece of work, whether that's insulation or something visual. Um, both of them work with insulations and with music, and they recorded the whole day. They, they took lots of photographs, they had visual work, but the outcome was not defined in as such that there was a painting or anything like that. So what they did is they, they created a hell of a lot of photographs um, and gave us a disc and said, here, you produce the work. And I thought, oh my God, this is really complicated. Since we 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 were not really part of the whole thing, uh, they told us what it is they were doing, but it was was fairly abstract. And this is the reason I I, uh, um, I like speaking about this project is that as uh, this is one of the, the the rare instances where as a as a designer you actually 
edit the work, usually someone else is doing that and you're, you're just executing what, what someone edits. In this case, we literally formulated the whole publication. So at some stage I said, you know what, the, the visual work is fine, but we need a context. Why don't you guys have a conversation? We record the conversation, someone else, I don't know who, but someone else is then transcribing it. You give the text to me and this text runs through to build a, to build a context for this. Then we have this kind of film work, we have this, this kind of still work, and I bless you. You see, that's the beauty of small lectures. <laughs> so, and then we, we, we laid it all out, uh, the still work, and, and created a, a page plan of, I don't know, quite a, quite a really thick publication, around 100, 140, 100, 150 pages. Then, according to that page plan, we looked at it and, and thought, well, that's where this chunk of the essay goes, because that's related to this work and the other piece goes here and that goes there. And there was a decent budget to, to get something like this produced. So each, um, each page itself was a was uh, slightly larger than A3 sheet, which was folded twice, but only folded twice, not opened twice. So you had a sheet which when you fold it, you could open it and look into then you open it, you could see it flat. And then you had another page where you could just about look into. And then you had the next sheet. Take a seat in the front. In the, okay, maybe not. Um, so, and then we, we um, as designers, then we had the, that, the, the sort of folding mechanism. And the, I, I really liked that folding mechanism simply because it would allow you as a designer to hide some work and to make it visually look more interesting than it actually is. And it, it wasn't, the, the material was not very interesting. That, that just a, that's just a fact. Most of the, the photographs were underexposed. They, they were not photographers. They used iPhone, they used a, a cheap Canon. It was terrible. And that's why I decided to, to simply um, uh, use halftone patterns for the, for the, for the cover. And the, the reason the circles are there, the, these colored circles, is that they, they use colored, colored dots you find in stationary shops, these really small ones, and they use, that was part of the work. So when you then r read through the conversation of them, suddenly all of this makes sense, that the work consists of dots, or my work, d um, creating a halftone pattern, then integrating that, that um, Color, color system, the, the color-coded uh, circles, suddenly it all made sense and, and it became a really, really good collaboration between artists and designers. I have somewhere, I have, um, obviously I can't show that to you, but I, I don't have the book with me, but somewhere I have, um, an, I think, if I knew where, I have an open page and you could s sort of see it, but there are too many images, I can't find it. Um, um, anyhow, so this was uh, a really, really good example of, of, a, of, a, of a collaboration between artists and, and designers. Needless to say, uh, they did not have a massive design budget and it took a long time to, to construct that sequence. It took a long time to, to create that folding mechanism um, that in the end, they um, usually the way I work is if, if there's it, not a ma massive budget, they don't get a massive say. In, in other words, they don't get much say. So either they take it or they leave it. Uh, yeah, so now if you could give me another number. Two. Okay, and another letter? Uh, oh no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Uh, you, uh, you, you, can't, you can't look. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> you know what, I'm not sure. I think next time I, I just asked people before. So B2, right? So this is <coughs> one of, um, one of my, 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 my first project after I, I uh, graduated. So um, uh, I, I uh, did my MA in, in the States at Yale, and then I had an offer to teach here in, in, in London and uh, decided to open my, 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 my own studio. Um, not, necess not necessarily because I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm such a good businessman. Uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm not. It was mainly naivety that I did why I decided to, to, to do it. In retrospect, I shouldn't have done it. 
uh, I should have worked somewhere for a couple of years, get the experience, see how they organize their, their, their studio, and then move ahead. Anyhow, through some of my fellow students and through one of my teachers at Yale, I, I then, I don't know, I had, to, I had a new, a couple of people here in London, uh, also I did my BA here, so I, when I came back, I, I, I just fell back on my, my old network, uh, and contacted a, a publisher for, for, for book work. Um, and I was recommended, so he thought I had experience, but in fact, I, um, I didn't. So with this book here, it's uh, is about British packaging. And what I um, really liked um, about this project is that the, the publisher said, again, here's, here are all the slides, this is all the, the packaging, do a page plan, uh, do section dividers, and, and uh, this, is, this is the text for, for each packaging. Uh, this is British, best British packaging in 1998 or, or something, uh, you do the book. And I, I sort of panicked because I've never done, really done a book before. I did not realize that I had to design a book in 16-page sections because that's how you bind a book, or in, at least in four, because you fold one sheet and that's four. You cannot have one. So that was a real, it, that was a real issue. Anyhow, the, um, what you see here, so this is the, I can't even read the, 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 the section name myself. Uh, anyhow, this was a, a section, I think, for medical products. And what I decided to do is to, to use um, details of um, packaging. And I worked with a photographer who took molds of objects. So, for instance, he would, he would take a plastic mold of, 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 of this mechanism, put that mold into um, a slide projector, together with some colored fluids, and project it against a wall and then photograph it. So what you see here in the medical section, this is a grip of a lady shave, when, where, you, where you put your thumb so that you, that you don't slide away. And each section used a detail of one of the packagings of that, in that section. So the CD section would have the, 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 um, the middle bit of uh, the spider. And again, everything was, was projection, everything was handmade. So it's all pre-digital and it's all anal analog, shot in an analog way. And it was really interesting to, um, as a designer, to, to, to physically work. I, I completely lost that. I, I hardly do that anymore. It's really, um, yeah, not really the, um, the, 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 uh, the done thing. So now, before I go back, if you give me a letter. A. A. And a number? Nine. OK, let's see. <laughs> I know your tricks now. <laughs> so A9, let's see what that, what, what that is. Um, Oh, here we are, okay. <laughs> so, that's a spread from a, uh, um, from a Sleuth magazine. Sleuth is a, uh, a, a, a gallery in, uh, in East London, and they also run their own art fair, and they also run a magazine. And um, two issues ago, they, they asked me to, to art direct the um, uh, magazine. And this, uh, this is an opener of the Institute for Everything, Institute, Inst Institut für alles Mögliche. Uh, you probably know the accent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I figured. Um, and what I <coughs> and what and what I really enjoy as a designer with uh, with these kind of projects is that you that you shape each individual article. So the the logo of the the institute is actually is a factory. But what I did is I then went online and um, looked at icons of factories. I then took one icon, which was really similar, and just co uh, and sliced it and made it longer and longer and longer and longer. I had one version which is, goes over two, three, four pages. That didn't, that didn't really work. So then I, I used the icon and just stretched it uh, across a double page spread. That worked really well. Then I, I put a, 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 a sort of medium gray in there and pixelated it. And the, the whole pixelation process is, is, is part of the, the overall identity of it. And um, the Institute is an artist organization and it um, enables artists in Berlin to get free spaces, almost like a, like a factory of artists. And the guy who enables this, who, who gives the, the artists the entrance door, so to speak. That, that guy's name who wrote the article was literally in, in, that, in that door down there. Uh, yeah, and uh, so we're working now on, on the third issue of Sleuth, and it's, from my point of view, it's, it's a great project since they um, let me design and edit the work. So, so one article will have five pieces, but I can decide, actually, you know what? No, uh, 
we only use this and we only use that because that makes more sense. Obviously, you have to read the article, but it's really nice that, that, that they trust me. And now I've got not much experience, but some experience, so that I am I'm quite, I wouldn't say I'm quite good, but I'm definitely in enjoying it. Uh, yeah, and that's where that sort of, th th that's why I get away with this kind of opener, which strictly speaking is not really showing an art piece. And it could be seen as quite frivolous to do something like that, that you waste a whole spread not showing someone's artwork. But they, they, don't, they don't really mind because it's it, through this kind of process it becomes a quite exciting uh, pu publication. So now, a letter from you, please. J. J? J. 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 Yeah. Okay. And if you could give me a number. J9, okay. You see, that's the beauty. When I see someone on the phone, I usually ask them. <laughs> it's not that I did it because of that, but it certainly helps. So J9, let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. So this, <coughs> this is probably one of one of the, my my most commercial project. It's a logo identity um, app for uh, green tomato cars, uh, which is environmentally friendly cap service. And the, the reason I'm, I'm showing that is there, there's, no, there's no concept. There is uh, no nothing. It's a completely um, commercial job. And the clients, we had a real fight. They, they really, really, really wanted to call it green tomato. And I thought, oh my god, for a cap company, you've got to be kidding. You can't call it. Well, they can. They did. <laughs> and there, and there, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, anyhow, the, the interesting the, for me, the, um, the learning outcome from, from this project was that the um, the client they were, um, they were they studied law in Cambridge. They were really really smart guys. Both had a um, uh, how, how do you call this a trust trust fund? Trust yes, both they were trust fund guys from West London. Uh, they both studied in Cambridge. They studied law, and they. Um, uh, were, how can I say, from, from, from my point of view, you get loads of stereotypical looking designers and they look like stereotypical lawyers from West London, from very, very rich families, and they were, but they were really nice guys and they were genuinely into green technology and they, they tried to, to um, it's a sort of typical English entrepreneurship where they, everyone was doing something green, they wanted to do something green because they're not interested in, in doing something with law. So they, they then thought, okay, let's set up a green uh, cap company. We call it Green Tomato. No, Christian, we n do think it's a good idea to do that. Uh, <laughs> and that's the outcome. However, they also at some stage decided to, to design an app, and that was really interesting. Usually small design studios like mine, you, you never get to design an app. That's usually what advertising agencies, programming studios, uh, or larger design studios do. So that was a real learning curve, and I, I loved it. It was so good to, to design the app, which is, you can, you can still down, obviously download it if you want to take a green tomato cap. You can. <laughs> and it was, uh, the, the uh, design of it was really complex, really complicated, and extremely challenging, unlike the logo stock of, of, of <laughs> That was not too complicated to do. You just had to redraw it in Illustrator. Anyhow, the, the app itself had around 105 pages and was like a huge family tree. And you needed to play through every single option. And I, 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 I loved the, the logic and I liked the, the system of it. And that was um, one, of the, um, one of the best things to do. Uh, I, I, really, I really liked it. That, I wouldn't say it looks a bit cheesy, but it actually does. But I don't, I don't really mind it because it's a nice project. You have a question? Yes. Uh, question about just that project in general. If you have that in your portfolio as yes. something, a piece of work that you're proud of in the sense that you worked with those people and that was the outcome of it, Yes. Like, do you think that designers on the other side, like if you're to show your portfolio in the sense of like this is a project that not necessarily I was able to pick the thing that I wanted to portray, do, do they understand that from that perspective? Or do you pick something that you think is like totally you, what you like believe to be the best product of that. You mean in my portfolio? Yeah, like just in, in general with like a commercial project like that. If you have different iterations of something that you thought worked better versus what they wanted to go with. Do you you know what, usually, usually if they want to go with this, that is usually better, they understand the market better. They've done, the, these guys are really seriously smart people. I know they didn't look it, I, I, I don't look it either, but 
but they are really seriously smart people and I sometimes you just have to step back and you have to to um, s not trust your intuition that my intuition is always design my, my intuition is not marketing my intuition is not the target audience most of the time I don't know the target or target audience they do and in this case they were actually right so I was Although, so my, my argument were, were sort of relevant that I, that I said it, it doesn't really look as good as this, but they said no, but we really like that name and we really want to, I'm just using name as, as one example. <laughs> and they, 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 they stuck to their guns and in the, in the, in the long run, excuse the pun with the taxi, but, uh, in, in, the, in the long run, um, they had to, the, it, somehow that name worked. And they, uh, the reason they um, were successful then in, in the long run is they managed to sell the entire company to uh, a, a large French company they call JC Deco. Don't know whether you know them. They they have, they have advertising under mm -hmm. the old bus Digital advertising. Ads, yeah. yeah, and they they sold the company for I don't know how many millions to JC Deco, and it just it just worked. And I thought, wow, that is also a really good learning out outcome for me. Yeah. So. Sometimes you, you have to trust your intuition and, and you know why, but sometimes you need to realize that your intuition might be completely wrong and that's a bit of a gamble. So you win some, you lose some. However, in my portfolio, I'm not sure, this is just for, for, for you guys. Mm -hmm. So in my portfolio, I'm, I'm not really showing this, particularly not with those <laughs> tomatoes on, on the side. That is really cheesy. I would not choose that. I, I, usually, I usually show, and no, I'm, I'm just showing this because that, that's what you have to do as, as designer. So I don't mind showing you this. This is, this is what I do. That's, that's just part of the parcel. Yeah. Uh, I would I'd rather show the, uh, the sexy app and I, and, and I show the, the pages which probably didn't make it. Yeah. N no one would know, but I just show it because this is how good I can design how good my design is, and, and this is <laughs> not how good my design is. <laughs> That's what they wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you give me another letter. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, and the number? Uh, eight. What? Eight. Eight. Okay, eight. Okay, so that doesn't work. Any other letter? Add Come on, any letter? C. Sorry? C. C, so C8, right? Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay, so that... Uh, So, apart from S that guy from Slews, he he's really uh, his name is Carl England. Uh, the guy's from New Zealand, but his name is Carl England. And um, so he um, he set up Slews magazine. He also set up Slews gallery, but he also set up Slews Exchange Berlin. And before he set up Slews Exchange Berlin, it's almost like like a Biennale. He did the same thing in what is it called Bushwick, in 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 Brooklyn. Bushwick. Sorry. Yes, he had the Bushwick ex ex exchange, yeah. So, and, and I think that what he's doing in Berlin is sort of the uh, equivalent. So he's, he's basically collaborating with uh, loads of galleries in Berlin. And what he asked me to do is to, um, to design an identity for this art fair in Berlin, which takes place in November. The, and um, the reason I, I put this in is just to, to, to um, how can I say, to explain the bitter reality of a designer's life. So sometimes with the artist book, you have a hell of a, hell of a lot of time. The app is a great, really uh, very, very high profile uh, project, really well paid. Whereas this here is not really well paid because I'm sharing the studio with a guy and I do some work in exchange for the studio. So, and I, he came in Friday at two o'clock and this was ready Friday at four o'clock. <laughs> the same day, not the next Friday. And I think, are you kidding me? How, how, how on, on, on earth will you, will you be able to, to, to design? So 
it was really complicated for me to, to come. I had two hours to, to design something and I thought, okay, he's not going to complain. I, anything I will do, he will, will have to accept it because it needs to go out to these people in Berlin who put it online. So that's then where, where stock photography comes or, or, or vector, I don't know, what, 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 is, it, what is it called? Vector based, uh, something like, I don't know, I, I, that company which, where, you, where you get, where you get fr royalty, Free. Yeah, I don't know what what is what is that Getty Images or something. So yeah. Getty Images, so let's say, yeah. So they have a section where you can download vectors. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I I uh, then in my head I just structured it. I have half an hour to find a vector. I have half an, half an hour to do the typography. I have half an hour to combine it and have a couple of couple of examples. Uh, then to print it out, refine it, and then it goes. And th that's exactly what I did. Otherwise, you will not be able to do it if you don't, if you don't structure it. If you, if you know, in half an hour, if you, if you haven't found the, that these kind of vectors, you're screwed. Then you can spend an hour, even longer, either drawing it up yourself or drawing it up yourself. Or um, so you stick to the timetable and do it, and that was the outcome. So I had two, literally, a bit more than two hours to do it. Uh, they sent it off, and then the only thing I changed afterwards was, was the uppercase, the X of, of exchange, where, where things come together. I quite liked that detail, and I didn't work it out before, uh, or didn't, didn't, it didn't really work it out correctly. And that went on to uh, Instagram straight away at 5 o'clock, and I, I had so many likes for that. And it, it really shows that sometimes when you just do things almost intuitively, and you do it really quickly, and obviously I've done design for the last, I don't know, I graduated in 95, so I, I, I have a good repertoire with visual tricks and, and experience. You can do that really quickly, and sometimes it, it, it works out. For two hours, it's not too bad. So I'm, I'm quite quite pleased, but it's really not, not a nice way of, of working, and if I were you, because you don't, have the ex you don't have the experience of doing something like that, there's no way uh, you, 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 would, you would say yes, because you, it, it, you will in all likelihood, not necessarily, but in all likelihood, you would fail and produce something which is not worth your while. Uh, yeah. So now, another number. Three. Three. And a letter. F. F. OK, that's before J, so it's OK. <laughs> Three F, right? OK. So uh, that's a um, so I'm art director of, of a AD architectural uh, design magazine, <coughs> and I um, uh, yes I've been art directing that the magazine is quite old. It's one of uh, Britain's oldest architectural magazines and is quite well respected. In, in the 60s, it was was really big with uh, with with Archigram and so on. And I've been working with the the same editor Helen Castle for I don't know. 15 years or so, and we, we produce AD together. So I redesigned the, it was quite a famous logo, but I, I, um, I redesigned it, and the original logo, or the logo, not the original, but the intermediate logo was based on a, on a very famous architectural sculptor. So but what, I, what I did is that I, I, uh, I looked at architectural principles, and I, being, being German, I, 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 I loved the Bauhaus as, as a, a philosophical underpinning. I really liked the uh, ideas and yeah, not really principled as such, but I, I, uh, um, is, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a, a modernist as such, but I, I, I do like the freedom, the sense of experimentation, and some of the ideas they had. So, and I thought, well, for, for, for an architectural logo, maybe I could base it on um, uh, one of the quotes is you can reduce, uh, Bauhaus, famous, very famous Bauhaus quote is that you can reduce everything to a square, a triangle, and a circle. And I thought, okay, maybe I could base the logo on a square, triangle, and, and a circle. And I was lucky that it's AD and not AW, so, so to speak. So that's where that, that logo comes from. And that's why at some stage we decided to, make it became quite I iconic after it was around for, I don't know, after my redesign. Um, for six, seven years, we just dropped the the architectural design underneath. It's just there, but it, it could have it could have been it could have been anywhere. So and, as, and I'm I'm really into as you've seen but from the from the style of of lecture that I that I don't have a uh, set narrative. A like most lectures they they're they're quite linear. This one is not, and um, this cover has a very 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 si similar similar. Um, 
look and feel to it. And I really like the fact that uh, in, in this square here, and they're, they're all numbered for, for no particular reason. I just numbered them because it works with, with, with mathematics. But I really like the there's, there's one there's one really um, uh, a very, very f uh, famous movie. It's one of my, my, fav my favorites. It's, it's called Escape from New York. Uh, done by John John Carpenter, and it's it uh, in in that movie the whole of Manhattan Island is one is one big jail, so whatever you do inside it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really matter, but the, so um, it's it's a sort of uh, area without without any laws anything can happen with within those strict parameters, and I always uh, when I was growing up, I always liked that concept of it, and it took me a really, really, really long time to realize why I liked it. And in a way, this is this is quite similar, or the the, the structure of my, my lecture or some of my design is quite similar, that in a such that I that I set parameters, and then I I just step back, press a button, and then I see what uh, what's happening, and I I like certain certain accident, accidents I, I really do like, and then I enlarged them, and they helped me to produce something new, something I, I would not have come up with otherwise. So in the design of this issue, I then take some of those details and blow them up. And they help me with, and they, they support the layout. And there's no way I could have preempted that layout. I would have done that layout without that technique, and the technique really helps me. And that is something which I adopted from that film, but that's also something which I learned from John Cage, uh, a, a very famous composer who used the I Ching, a roll of dice, to produce compositions, which are free of his personal taste because he chooses the notes according through the roll of dice. And it sounds a bit odd, but that doesn't really matter. And that's really, really similar, so that's the sort of uh, equivalent of it. So, when, so in other words, when you see that design, it looks like a normal cover, but from, from, from my point of view, it's a really, really personal choice, which most people would not be aware of, and they don't have to be aware of. This is just, for me, my bridge to, to get to that kind of, des to, to achieve that kind of design, if that, if that makes sort of sense. So, one more letter. H. What? H. H. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a number? One. One H. Okay. So that's uh, <coughs> that's the British packaging book. I, I, I showed you the the lady shape early on. So this is the cover of the of the same book, and the the detail you see here is obviously the book cover. So we'll open and close. What what that is is a, um, a safety device. You know the, these these kind of pill boxes where you just have to press yeah. and then to open. So we use that lid, put the mold on top, put it into slide projector with some. Uh, colors and bubbles and, and projected it and photographed the projection from behind. So that's how we, how we produced that. And that was really, really fun doing. So most of the packaging was incredibly boring, like boots or something. Uh, so yeah, so it really, really lifted it. So another number? Uh, six. Six, okay, but they haven't, uh, and a letter? E. What? E. E, E6, okay. So that's a probably real size, quite a big calendar for, uh, for, for Vespa. So that was a really, really um, another really high profile job. And the, um, uh, the Vespa PR department, they literally called me up out of, out of the blue. Hey, Christian, how are you doing? And I, whoa, and I, I just, I, I knew the person. So, hey, would you like to come, American person, would you like to, to, to fly over, come, come to Obama? So they, 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 they flew me over to Italy, which was a bit odd, but for, for, I don't know, how can I say, being located in London and then flying to Italy, for me, is not a really big deal, but it's a big deal enough. It's not that I'm going to New Cross or something, <laughs> right? From from Hackney Central, but but that person being American, she didn't really. It's Europe, and uh, so anyhow, I flew over, and uh, worked on um, the the uh, and w that was uh, one of my my uh, is one of my my favorite projects. So basically, they asked me to to write to to come up with uh, 
12 set designs and the um, and we shot winter scenes, summer scenes in a, in a studio in, in Milan with probably around um, 30 actors, um, props and everything centered, centered around a, uh, uh, a Vespa. And part of the briefing was that she just briefed me over the phone and I wrote back. So that, and, and uh, in one of my emails I said, so, so what you're trying to say is that you you do what you do every day, you do just better with a Vespa. And she just wrote back, yeah, juice that as, as a, uh, on, the, on the calendar cover. I thought, okay, that's, uh, that's fine. So what I, was, what I was trying to communicate with, with, this, this, with this Photoshop image here is, so what I did is I went to the, to the Vespa Museum and I'll give you a bit of a background with Vespa, which I think is, 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 quite, is quite interesting. So uh, Germany and uh, Italy collaborated. Mussolini and Hitler uh, collaborated. And after <laughs> the war, they were allies. And after, after the war, the um, uh, Vespa, they, 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 they produced airplanes. Like, like BMW, they, they also produced airplanes. And the, um, the whole factory was, was closed. They, they had to close the factories and they, they had uh, and the, the way that the, the, the airplanes worked is that they had small motors to ignite the, the larger ones. And they had thousands of these small motors left. And they had a, a, a brilliant engineer and the engineer thought, we can't throw them away. It must be something we, we, could, we could do with them. And they tested and tested and tested and they, they created a bit more than a, than a bicycle with those. And one of the guys said, well, wow, it sounds like a, like a, like a bee, like a, like a wasp, like a wasp, like a vespa. And that's where the where that name comes from, and that's that's it, so it was born out of out of uh, necessity, literally after the war, and they wanted like the like the French uh, de cheveux, they just wanted something for the people. Everyone could have one, should be able to afford one, and that's where the story comes from. And so I went to the museum with the photographer, and we photographed some old models and some new models. And what I was, and I'm, I'm really into I don't know sci-fi, Blade Runner, the whole you get the sort of idea and what I was trying to do is to 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 combine to uh, to show you I'm not sure whether it's that obvious but somewhere there in the middle is an old one and I was trying to to show in that collage that the new one is coming out of the old one so so to speak and um, I uh, I was lucky to get away with this cover because the client was flying on was flying to, to uh, back to uh, America, and the cover needed to go to to print. And she said, "You know what? We've done so much. We have so much material. Whatever you decide for the cover, it needs to go to print now. Uh, you do it." And then when she saw this, which does not look like anything like the the actual calendar pages, she was a bit taken ab aback. But because it was the, the I don't know. I, 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 but in the long run that cover proved to be quite iconic and, and quite successful so that she was then happy, but initially she wouldn't have allowed it if she wouldn't have been on the plane. So, uh, yeah, so that's the story of, of, uh, of that cover. So anyhow, the, 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 um, the calendar was really well received and then they, a couple of months later, they called me up and asked whether I would like to work on the Vespa commercial. And then I thought, wow, that is really cool. I've never done a commercial and worked with a, with a team of, of around 70 people with the director, me as art director and the client. And we, we uh, created a really nice uh, Vespa commercial. I've got some shots by, I, I, uh, of, of that commercial in there, but I don't think they will come up. Unless, let's try it. Give me a letter. D. Sorry? D. D. And a number? Seven. D7. Maybe it comes up. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somehow this is really, really this is really distorted. I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure this is, this is working out. <coughs> Anyhow, this is the Instagram version of a poster for, uh, for an event. So for the last 10 years, I've been working with a, uh, with a client they called Phil Marmalade, and they, they publish artist work but they, they publish only artists' film work. And it's really difficult for artists who deal, who, who deal with the medium film to sell their work. Because um, it's not like a painting which, just, which you can just hang on the wall. So a film is, is, is pretty non, nondescript. You could only see it in a, in, a, in a theater or at home with a projector. And anyhow, so 
they're called Phil Marmalade, the F, uh, uh, and they, they have an event, a retrospective, uh, 10 years of, of Phil Marmalade, and they, they show, and they needed a, a, a poster for these, these events. And my first designs for, for Phil Marmalade, um, the DVD cover for Phil Marmalade, the first designs were, were based on um, the con mm, on the concept that all films are being projected through a technical unit, so to speak. And I was trying to visually represent uh, technology almost like a filter, so all films go through that technology filter, through these RGB things. And the, the cover for the, for the first DVDs did not show uh, a scene from each film, it just showed black, black and white lines similar to those, or similar to um, the, the IBM cover, uh, sorry, the IBM, Paul Rand's famous IBM logo. Do you know that logo, IBM logo? Yeah. So that was the uh, a detail of that logo, so to speak, w because that for me rep represents a computer screen. Uh, that was the cover. And what I was trying to do here is to go back to the, to the first version of the, the, sorry, the first cover designs and try to create a multi-layered sequence over 10 over 10 years that I, that I create some, I don't know, uh, a movement, some, some depth uh, using those, those lines. And all of this is more or less accidental. I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I set up some coordinates and then changed it. Uh, and that was another completely accidental outcome in the same way that, let's say, the mathematics cover was, or could be. So another number. Five. Five, and another letter. A. So A5. That's a good size. Uh, so. <laughs> that's a it was A6. Sorry? It was A6, but it's yeah. fine. That's just another dice. Yeah, then never mind. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's also a bit, bit skewed. That's quite funny. So. Uh, <laughs> So this is an, uh, a really good example to show you how systems can work. So I, um, I was approached by a gallery and they um, uh, were about to launch a, a contemporary art magazine. And they didn't have a name or size or style, they didn't have anything. So we have to, I had to start from scratch, including, including the name. And since, as you, as you figured by now, I really like systems, so, they, um, so Andrew and Simon couldn't decide on a, on a name, so I, I, I then took Andrew and Simon and typed it into, into an, uh, an anagram website. So, and the, the result were loads of, you know, anagrams are the same letters, so just uh, different configurations. And one of the outcomes of Simon and Andrew, Andrew and Simon, is Miser and Now, which I'm not sure whether it says, well, I'm not sure whether that's legible, but it says Miser and Now. And Miser and Now is, is, an, is, is one of the outcomes of a long, we literally had 150 names. Uh, and that one stuck, and I really liked it, suggested it to them, and they, they um, said, great, it sounds completely surreal, but let's go with it. That, uh, no, that's fine. Um, so then I thought about the, the meaning of, of, of Miser, looked at Dickens and uh, Ebenezer Scrooge and, uh, and, and so on, and then uh, made, a, made a, uh, a connection with the, the um, because m many contemporary art, made a connection with Miser and the, uh, <coughs> Most people who collect art, they were telling me, do that as a sort of almost like an, like an investment. And then suddenly I had the theme, money. So then most of the fonts in the issues were either from the American dollar note or they were from Swiss bank notes, Australian bank notes, you name it. They were all, all monetary related, all coming from money. And the reason, and if you look at the, the English Banknotes, if you look at the, this is taken from, from a five pound note where it says Bank of England with a swirly bit. So what I, what I did then is I, um, I contacted a, uh, an actual engraver who uh, on uh, in Hatton Gardens where, they, where you get wedding rings and, and they, uh, this guy, Emmett is his name, he, uh, he, he, does, he engraves most um, football trophies. So the FA Cup, European Cup, you name it, he, he does that. So, and then I said, could you also do an engraving based on the five pound note? So I made some really, really rough sketches. And again, it's really similar to, I gave him the sketch and I said, what, what, whatever, you can, whatever you can come up with, uh, let's see, let's, let's 
and this, this was his engraving. I, I didn't really change that much. I, I, I did some sketches, but ultimately this is how he, how he interpreted my sketches in combination with the um, five-part note. So, and then we're, we're nearly 45 minutes in. As a sort of last, last, no, that's it. Uh, sort of last quick, if I can't find it, i show you that, yes, it's here. So Simon and Andrew then said, we have to use this particular image. Uh, not, uh, whoops. We, have, we have to use one particular image for the, for the next cover. And I tried to design the next cover, and it didn't work with the logo in the same position. And they said, why don't you just make the logo a bit smaller? And I thought, what? <laughs> We had 10 issues. They all have the same size. You can't just. Yes, you can. <laughs> no one died. And I thought, my OCD, that is great news. I, uh... So yeah, on that note, uh, thank you very much. It's 45 minutes. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and sure, the more the merrier. We'll have a bit of a conversation if no one wants to ask any questions. Yeah, well, literally what... So we'll open it up to the floor, Tommy. Um, just with like, the work that you had done, you were talking about with as soon as you finished your, your university experience and like the fact that they peop people put places trust in you versus like the more commercial pro projects where people kind of like, you had that backlash. Um, how do you feel like from a perspective of our, us as students, like what we can do going forward to have, I don't know, projects like that where we could be put in that situation of having trust or, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like kind of like the trust kind projects, of, like yeah. doing things for something that you were truly interested in and they were just like totally run with it. Um, like, I don't know, in comparison to commercial projects, how can we push ourselves to, I guess, accomplish projects like that so basically what you're trying to say is how how do you get to, how do you get project as a student or or as young well, how do you get someone to trust you is yeah, that yeah, what you mean how do you get someone to yeah. trust you enough just to it's just well, like totally run with it kind yeah. of a thing like yeah well usually uh, people who know you trust you yeah. so and that's where you have to start just ideally you would have some interesting friends who have businesses and and uh, need, need the designer otherwise there's there's, there's no chance and I, I did mention that before. I'm not sure uh, you, you remember that when, when, when Cam said, oh, we do need to send out these letters. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I said, you know what, that's all well and fine, but they receive so many letters. The, the, the thing you need to do is you need to, to call up people you know, and they know people and they, to, to get an internship. That's exactly the same principle. I got the jobs because I knew people, and they, they, they knew I, I, I would work through the night to deliver. I've never failed. I can't uh, talk about the OCD thing. That, that was not a joke. I am OCD. Most designers are, that I'm having attention to detail, that I can't really see that phone in an angle. It, thank you. No, I'm kidding. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, it's not that bad. But I, I cannot not deliver whatever it takes. Sometimes I, 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 my wife, she's also a designer. She says, oh, my God, how will, I, how will I do it? And I think, yeah, but you've got 24 hours left. Yeah. That's enough. A couple of minstrels died, go, okay, you just carry on working. So, and people know that I, that I would deliver, so they, they trusted me, and uh, I did deliver, and they, they then recommended me for being, hopefully, a good designer, and for being able to deliver on time. And sometimes, you don't get the job because you're good. You only get the job if you actually deliver. And that's why sometimes you, you lose out as well, because a, a company is bigger, they're not better, but they're better organized. So, and that's why they get the job. It had nothing to do with, with qualification or anything like that. So to answer your question, in, in a nutshell, um, ask your friends to commission you. And, and they then hope that you're good enough. Yeah, any other? Yeah. Um, is there um, a client or kind of subject that uh, is kind of missing on your portfolio that you would like to work on? But yeah, I, ideally something like I got a, a Nike, Nike or Adidas. Yeah, some, I, I, ideally I'd like to have a really high-profile client where I could do sort of experimental typography. 
something something digital with glitches where things come 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 out and I don't know like like the first alien or something as type <laughs> something like that do you know alien the first yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, something <laughs> so some some yeah oh. you know what's really good now I watched that last night the uh, on Avatar, sorry yeah, Avatar was quite <laughs> don't know it. Avatar. 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 Uh, yeah. Well. yeah, but 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 some yeah, but something black and white, uh, pixelated with with type, ideally for uh, I don't know so something like like Nike or Adidas. But uh, to be honest, yeah, but I don't. Sure. I'm just saying that because they would probably pay really well. Uh, but it 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 could be something like uh, the, this this film company for Marmalade. If I don't I don't really I don't really mind. Uh, I think the the for me the main point is the um, the. The challenge to 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 create. I I I hate having a style as such. Maybe I don't know whether yeah. that comes through or not. I like old stuff. I like new stuff. But I I in my head I I always try to. I I know I'm doing it um, to some extent. But in my head I try to not to repeat myself. Yeah. So I don't really care what it is as long as it is a good challenge. Yeah. And I need to pay my rent. So that's. <laughs> so green tomatoes all the way. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why they get the jobs. Yeah. yeah. But you see, sometimes at least, that they, you see some work that doesn't work. I mean, that's not. I mean, you, know, you think that I could do better. Yeah. Most of the time, I think that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Maybe it's a male ego thing or something. <laughs> where I think, <laughs> where, where, when you yeah, think, I no, I could do that better. I mean, that's big, like company, well known. Yes. Yeah. Probably yeah. Yeah, but if you think about it, even my, my wife, she used to work for Interbrand for, for, for a long time. So she did uh, NOR, K N O R R, food company, yeah. German food company. Mm -hmm. So she did re redesigned NOR, and there were a couple of guys working on NOR. And you think, whoa, Interbrand, really big company. And then you, you look behind the scenes, there are only five guys. Uh, it's almost like in, in The Simpsons, like <laughs> fiddling around, and they do NOR. And, and because it's interbrand, they no one knows. It's just a big house, but th they are just in in one room doing that, and the the, the client get charged I don't know 125 thousand a day. Uh, but ultimately, and, and that's why you, you can make can create better designers. That one creative director in there is not that creative as director. Then you then you have an then you have an issue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No. <laughs> Can I ask a question if no one else has one? Yeah. Um, I'm really interested in the. the um, there's an interesting thing between this grid that you have and the idea of randomness. So this idea of complete order, structure, and then randomness, the yeah. matching, the kind of following the process, like happy accidents and all this kind of thing. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit to that in terms of. Because it seems like an underlying force in a lot of yeah, the process. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, let me just show you it's some. It seems in a way very postmodern, you know. In, in, you know. So, yeah. I'm not sure whether you, could, you can see who that, who that is. That is. So, in my second year, in my BA, so where you are now, mm. I, I, came ac I came across that guy's work, John Cage. I think in, in the, he died in that year. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. Anyhow, I just bought it uh, randomly. <laughs> this is quite funny if you buy something random about a, a guy who does random stuff. So anyhow, I, r I randomly bought a magazine uh, about his work. And I, I, I found his working um, methodology and, and philosophy amazing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah. He, he, um, his most famous piece, he um, defined a, um, by throwing the dice, he defined a, an amount of time, four minutes and 33 seconds, and that's his most famous piece. So, and his friend David Tudor, the, the pianist, went into, into a massive, I don't know, auditorium 
completely full of, full of people in, in New York and went, went up to the, to the piano, uh, opened the piano, sat down, mm -hmm. and then had silence for four minutes and 33 seconds. And obviously what, what happens is that, that you, and, and Cage did experiments. He went to the, t went to the MIT and went into, into a, a sound chamber without any sound, and there is no silence because ultimately, uh, maybe in space, with Alien, in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, he didn't go to scream. He just went to a sound chamber. And in that chamber, the only thing he could hear it was his own heartbeat. So he then concluded there is ultimately there is no silence. Silence does not exist. So David Tudor, w w Tudor was sitting in front of the piano, and everyone listened. And the accidental noises of the audience became the music. So everything is music. Everything is graphics, everything communicates, everything is up for grabs. And I, I just loved it. I don't know what, but something in me I just clicked and I responded to, to that thinking. I just responded to it. And mm -hmm. from, from, from there, I, I did some, some more research. So Cage was, at the time, he was going out with Merce Cunningham. Mm -hmm. Cunningham was we, is, is an, uh, is an uh, amazing, amazing dancer. And they uh, worked together. Cage did the, the music for Merce Cunningham Dance Theatre where they where Merce Cunningham would say this dance will be 16 minutes and 37 seconds long, you do the piece. And they, on the evening of the performance, the f these two components came together for the first time and it was completely, no one knew what, what, what would happen and it didn't matter. And that's great, I, I, I just love those kinds of things. I'm, I'm so, I wouldn't say I'm a control freak, yeah. but you noticed that I said I would be here at quarter two. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this was, and I said I, I, I text you a couple of minutes before. Mm -hmm. So I texted you at forty three, saying I will be there in two or three minutes. Yeah. I did it on purpose. So I I, yeah. I just love doing that that sort of thing that I set up system sometimes to to make fun of myself that people mm -hmm. think oh god you're German you're always on time no I'm not <laughs> I just do that to wind myself up, uh, and. I, I just love those those kind of systems which play with my my. You see, my, my wife is completely all over the shop when when, when she eats something <laughs> and she just trips over. I say, oh my god! But it really keeps me in check, and I really like that. <laughs> that I that I don't over overreact, <laughs> and uh, it's it's really uh, and, and I really and that's I think where our relationship still works, and. That is really, really similar. That, I, that, I, that that's why I, I don't really like modernism as such. It is it is almost too too controlled, yeah. and I, I just like the uh, freedom. But you know, nothing is going to happen. Mm. Well, nothing going to happen in design anyway. But no one's going to die if you have the logo smaller. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and then from from Cage, I um, I got really got into, and they they also knew one another. Uh, maybe difficult to see. This is uh, Mar Marcel Duchamp, and what, oh. and what, what, what he. When, so then I started reading uh, uh, in, uh <coughs> about du Duchamp uh, with ready-mades and, and so on, and that's why I liked contextualizing things. And I got really into where, where he where he takes one object mm -hmm. like the urinal, puts it into a gallery, signs it, and that's a piece of art. And I thought that is great. That's fantastic. I I I, I really I really like that. Mm -hmm. Why not Why not creating um, buttons. Uh, so this, this is um, one of my, my favorite designs. It's just a manhole cover you find, you find in London. No one looks at that, but the, the graphics, where engineer did that, that's, that's a piece of genius. It's really, 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 really nicely designed. Or you look at this here, that's from New York. That's, that's the same thing. And uh, that's really, really, really cool. Um, and on, on that note, I, I put this here in, also as, as in inspiration. This is um, one of my, my, uh, my favorite movies. It's called Alice in the Cities. It's from Wim Wenders. It was shot in 90, 1974. And when my wife and I, we met in the, in the halls of residence, we were both sort of dating, and, and, and uh, we went to see that art movie and, as art students. And in one of, in one of the scenes, um, uh, she was flying from, um, from New York back to uh, Germany and back to my hometown, where coincidentally the film director is originally from. Uh, her name is, is Alice, I really liked her. Our daughter is called Alice now. Um, anyhow, on the flight back, when, when, when they filmed her on the, on the plane with the handheld camera, they probably just, while they were flying, got the camera out and, and filmed her. She had to say something. She then suddenly had a hiccup. Like, 
<laughs> carried on, carry on talking. You don't see that in, in normal movies. Mm. This will be cowed. Not in that guy's movies. And it really, really, uh, really, really in, in inspired me, these, these, acci these accidents. Yes. Yeah. So that's where all, yeah, all this yeah, is yeah. sort of interconnected. So uh, high tech with the pixels, and, and, uh, but there's still uh, a system where you step back, yeah. you press a button, or whatever pixel happens, happens. I don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. The kind of the algorithmic approach to design a little bit. A uh, what? Algorithmic approach. Yeah. Somehow. Like yeah. the kind of Olipo and these kind of like system-based yeah. designs. Any more questions from the audience? Yeah. 72 A5. 72 A5. 72 A5. A5? 72 A5. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you happy now? Is that the so yeah, so that's uh, a page from Sluice in, in the magazine. And uh, again, the pixelation process. And on the top right, that is taken from, a, from, a, from an old 35 millimeter film roll. So when you give a film roll to, uh, into a lab, they put it into a machine, and they, so the machine reads that code and knows whether it's ASA 100, 200, 3, or 400, or whatever the ASA number is, and develops the film accordingly. So it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a visual coding system. And I, I like that. And, and the whole identity of SLUS is based on, on visual codings, and that's why I put lots of references like that in. No one knows, but I don't, yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. Whatever, it looks nice, and yeah. Well, SLUS kind of reminds you of SLUS. Which is kind of like the detective, like oh. a sleuth. Sleuth is like a detective. A detective? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. The sleuth. Sleuth is a detective. Really? Yeah. S L E U. Yeah. T H. Yeah. Sleuth. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that sleuth is a, a a water device where you. Ah. Okay. That's like a dam, like a man-made ah. dam where you it just holds the water away. Okay. Oh yeah. That's how. Well, they. I don't know. They just like the. They only like the word, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Any more? Any more questions from the ground? No. Okay. I guess if if everybody's happy and if you we're all. Um, satisfyingly inspired by all this design and grids and systems. Then we should uh, thank uh, Christian for excellent talk. Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for asking. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. you.